In our last video, we're going to find the center of a circle uh, algebraically using two perpendicular bisectors of, a chords, of two different chords in a circle. There's a theorem that says that if you take any two chords in a circle, find their perpendicular bisectors, they will intersect at the center of the circle. So I'm going to do the first one, which is called 20A. 20B is actually the same circle, and it uses one of the same chords. What if we use a different second chord? You should come up with the same answer I get. You can practice that on your own. What I'm going to do first is find the perpendicular bisector for each of these two chords. So let's take a look at the points 5, 7 and the point 7, 3. Let's find the equation of its perpendicular bisector. First, I want to know that it goes through the midpoint. The midpoint would be 7, 6. Sorry, the midpoint would have 5 plus 7 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. 7 plus 3 is 10 divided by 2 is 5. Then, it has to be perpendicular to this line. If this line goes down 4 units and right 2, down 4, right 2, it has a slope of negative 2. Its perpendicular slope would be the opposite reciprocal of positive one-half. I'm going to use the midpoint and the new slope to write the equation for a line. I'm going to write it in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to multiply and solve for b. Subtracting 3 from both sides gives me b equals 2. The equation of the first perpendicular bisector of the first chord is y equals 1 half x plus 2. Next, I'm going to use the second chord. You can reuse this for the next example if you try this on your own. Taking the points negative 2, 0 and positive 5, negative 1. Let's find the midpoint. The average of the x-coordinates would be 1.5, a little bit tricky, and the average of the y-coordinates would be negative 0.5. Okay, so decimals, we're going to do the best that we can. Our slope goes down 1 and right 7. The original slope is down 1 and right 7. So the perpendicular slope would be positive 7. Would be positive 7. So I want to use this point and this slope to build my line. I'm going to start by using, we're going to use y equals mx plus b, I guess. So let's use y equals mx plus b. Negative 0 0.5 equals 10.5 plus b. Let's find b. Let's subtract 10.5 from both sides. Negative 11 equals b. y equals 7x minus 11. Now here comes the fun part. These two equations are the equations for the perpendicular bisectors, but I want to find where they cross each other. What I next need to do is solve a system of equations using or containing these two equations. Since they are both in slope-intercept form, I can use substitution. If 1 half x plus 2 equals y and y equals 7x minus 11, the transitive argument says that I can set this expression equal to the y in the second equation. So I'm going to plug my first equation into my second equation. And now I've eliminated the y's, and I only have x's to solve for. What might make things easy if I don't want to deal with fractions is to double the entire equation. We're going to go for that. I'm going to double the left side and double the right side. Next, I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to bring the 22 to the left and the x to the right. So 26 equals 13x. Divide by 13, x equals 2. The circle has a center with an x-coordinate of 2. How do I go on and find the y-coordinate? How do I go on and find the y-coordinate? Well, if I know the x-coordinate and I have equations that relate x and y, I can plug this x-coordinate into either equation. I should come up with the same thing. Looks like the bottom equation is the one I'm going to work with. 7 times the x-coordinate for the center minus 11 will give us the y-coordinate. 14 take away 11 is 13 
I meant to say 3. 14 take away 11 is 3. So the center of our circle is 2, 3. Let's eyeball this and see if it looks right. Two to the right and three boxes up. Somewhere in there is our center. Um, it's hard to see on my graph. Maybe it should be exactly there. Um, yeah, I will accept that as an answer. When you do this the second time, all you need to do is find the perpendicular bisector of this chord that's up here and solve your system the same way. Our last question, so again, these two questions are identical. They just use a different chord the second time. Okay, our last exercise might be a little bit difficult, but there is one on your homework that is a little bit difficult to work with, and it's the only one, so I shortened it and just only gave you one. Same process. Let's find the perpendicular bisector of these two chords. Let's find the midpoint. So I'll call this chord number one. I'll call this chord number two. The midpoint of chord one would be seven, 16, the slope goes down 2 and right 14. Down 2 and right 14 is negative 1 7. So the perpendicular slope would be 7. So if I do slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Find the y coordinate, I'm sorry, the y intercept, given the y coordinate, the slope, and the x coordinate. Subtract 49 from both sides. Looks like 27 negative 27 equals B. I'm just going to double check my math. Let's do 16 take away 49. 16 minus 49. Wow, could not be more wrong. So let's erase that. Where did I get that from? I don't know. Maybe it's late. So the first equation is y equals 7x minus 33. All right, so this is our first equation. Our second equation is the one I wanted to help us with. Let's find the midpoint between 1217 and 143. Add together 26 divided by 2, 13. Add together 20 divided by 2, 10. The slope goes down 14 and right 2. The original slope is negative 7. The perpendicular slope is positive 1 7. Okay, fractions. What I'm going to do is, we're going to try to do this, maybe we'll try to do this using point slope. y minus 10 equals 1 7 times this quantity. Now, I have one equation. I don't want both equations. I do want both equations to match, but technically I could substitute this equation into here and solve it. Um, I'm going to do myself a favor and rewrite this in slope-intercept form. Let's add 10 to both sides. And if I don't like fractions, I'm going to multiply every term by 7. So I'll have 7y. You know what? Let's deal with it. I feel like dealing with it. I feel like that might be more complicated in the long run. So why don't I distribute the 1 7th? Let's try this. I changed my mind. Negative 13 over 7 plus 10. Now if I want to combine these ter two terms, they have to have the same denominator. I'm going to replace 10 with 70 sevenths. 1 7th x, and it looks like 57 sevenths. What I next need to do is solve a system of equations with my two underlined equations. So y equals 7x minus 33, and y equals 1 7th x plus 57 sevenths. I could plug one into the other, or I can try to do some sort of elimination technique. I'm just going to go with the substitution, plug the first equation into the second equation and solve this. 7x minus 33 equals 1 7th x plus 57 sevenths. All right, now is the time. Maybe I'll multiply everything through by 7 and clear my fractions. So this equation is now going to become 49x. 210 and 21 is 232 minus 230. Actually, I think I said 232. I meant to say 231. Minus 231 equals x plus 57. 
I'm going to move the x to the left and 231 to the right. 48x equals, let's add to 231, 882, 288. Last step to find x, divide by 48. I think that's 6, 240, and 48, 288. Yep, x equals 6. So this tells us the x coordinate of my center is somewhere here, 6. To find the y coordinate, plug the x coordinate in and solve for y. It does not matter which equation. I'm just going to test the first one. Should be the same either way. But the first one looks to me like it's a little bit easier. So it's more inviting to me. 33 less than 42 looks like a 9. So I believe the center will be the point 6, 9. Your homework tonight is a Google form. There are a few questions in representing a lot of the different sections that we learned today. Please email me if you have any questions.